Welcome to part four of the Lifehacker Night School series on making and deploying a website. Uh, today we are going to talk about choosing a host and launching your website. So in the previous three lessons we already discussed the basics of HTML, uh, brushed up on styling and CSS, and we learned a little bit about taking a design idea from say a mock-up in Photoshop to a real website. Um, so now it's time to choose a host and launch the site. There are a lot of different web hosts out there, um, and honestly, they all work. Um, some are better than others. We've got uh, a high five that we've done in the past on personal web hosts, uh, highlighting hosts that readers like. The favorite among them uh, has always been DreamHost, at least among our readers, and personally, it's what I've always used for my sort of lightweight personal sites, the, the sites that don't need a lot of traffic um, or don't need to handle a lot of traffic. It's really up to you what you choose. Um, we don't necessarily have anything that we endorse over anything else. Like I said, I like DreamHost. I've had good luck with it. Um, it's not the kind of site that you would or host that you would necessarily use if you were going to try and host a very high traffic site. Um, but that's not really what this series has been about anyway. So most, most cheap hosts will do the trick nicely for you. DreamHost is, I believe, around $9 a month. You need basically two things to get started with your site. You need to have a hosting plan, which you can get from someone like DreamHost, and then you also need a domain name. Uh, the domain name is the friendly URL like lifehacker.com that points to uh, a string of numbers and dots that are not really easy to remember. Um, they're the addresses that make surfing the web easy. You can type a word in that you know, .com or whatever, hit enter and go to it. So you need to get a domain name to get started, um, and you can get a domain name either at a domain registrar, um, like say Namecheap, uh, it's a very popular registrar. Um, you can also get free domain names a lot of times when you sign up for web hosting at some place like DreamHost. Um, there, there's a pretty distinct difference between the domain and the hosting. The hosting is, is literally just what hosts your files. It's, it's the server space, it's the disk space, and then the bandwidth to transfer those files to people. But uh, a lot of hosts will give you a free domain when you sign up. Um, I talked a little bit about the finer points of why you might want to choose one method over the other. But for the most part, I would assume most people would prefer just getting the domain name through their registrar. Um, up to you entirely. Um, choosing a domain name can be a little bit difficult uh, because unless you're using, unless you have, for example, a, a unique name and you want to use your name as your uh, domain, getting a domain with actual uh, words, common words that people know can be really difficult. There's a lot of domain squatting. I really like the uh, search tool Instant Domain Search for checking on domains and basically you can type in and it will give you, as you type, results for uh, whether or not a domain is available across .com, .net, or .org. Um, it's a really good way to get started. There's other search tools which I'll, which I'll, I'll link in the comments or in the, the text of the post that will give you sort of other methods of finding available domains. but. You find a domain you might like, you buy it either through your host or through a domain registrar, and then you're ready. Now all that's left to do is deploy your site. Uh, to do that, you basically need an FTP or SFTP. Uh, SFTP sound, stands for Secure FTP. Um, it's just a more secure way of uh, transferring files so that they're encrypted during the trans, uh, transmission. Um, and most uh, most web hosts will give you an FTP uh, will give you FTP or SFTP credentials when you when you create an account. Um, for some, you may have to create those credentials when you first log in. Uh, either way, it's not that difficult to do, um, and you should be able to find them relatively easily somewhere in your account. So, for example, this is my DreamHost account and. Right up top, it talks about um, when I signed up. They automatically set up my first FTP user, and they have this whole page for uh, setting up users and uh, and editing users and creating new passwords. Um, so once you've got those credentials, which as I said will vary depending on your host, you are ready to upload your site uh, from your local machine to the server. 
Uh, to do that, you'll need an FTP client, and I like Cyberduck. It's available for uh, Windows and Mac. It's free and it's open source. Uh, there's maybe better options that you can pay for, but if, if you're not doing this professionally, Cyberduck does the job nicely. So, to connect to your site, click on the Open Connection button and enter in your server name. Um, I'm going to choose SFTP. Um, enter your username and your password. And then click Connect. Uh, when it connects, you will get a directory listing and you want to upload for your purposes you're probably going to want to upload your files to the root directory of your domain which basically means that when I visit for example adampatch.com it will show me uh, it will show me your site uh, the index.html will be at the root of that page and you would be able to and it would just load automatically um, for this example I'm going to create um, I'm going to create a directory because I already have something there. Um, and so now it will be adampatch.com slash my website will load uh, the website that we created. The root of, of your directory of your domain will vary depending on your uh, host. In, in my case, uh, in Dreamcoast's case, they basically create folders uh, with the dom domain name that, that are the root of that domain. Um, your host may vary, so check with your host to find out which is the case for you. Um, so once you're in your root domain directory, you are going to want to pull up your files for your website. So this is ours. This is the one that Adam created yesterday. This is the site, and this is it running currently on my local computer. Take those files, and in this case we want the index, scripts, images, and CSS. The PSD was just his Photoshop mockup. To upload the files, just click the Upload button and then navigate to the folder with the files you want to update. You just select everything that you want and click choose. Um, this is FTP, uh, an SFTP. Uh, it's asking for the host key. Uh, you won't, if you're using just plain FTP, you won't get a message like this. And it will begin uploading. The uploading should take next to no time. Um, and as you can see now, you can, the directory listing uh, for the my website URL uh, or directory is now contains the CSS files, uh, it contains the images and the scripts which we actually don't have any of in here but if you had JavaScript you would potentially put them in that fo uh, folder. So now uh, here this is on my local machine if I want to check it out on the web, I should just be able to navigate to adampatch.com slash my website. And there it is. Um, that really is all there is to it. Um, so if you've made it this far, congratulations and welcome to your new website.